Arguably one of the most influential bass players of all time, revolutionising the role of the bass guitar and changing the landscape of popular music forever. He was the unsung hero behind 23 number one hits on the pop charts, 56 R&B number one hits and ranking number one on the 50 greatest bass players of all time according to Rolling Stone magazine. His bass lines on songs like My Girl by The Temptations, You Can't Hurry Love, by the Supremes and What's Going On by Marvin Gaye are still considered some of the most iconic bass parts in the history of popular music. His contributions to Motown's legendary sound have earned him a reputation as a true pioneer of the electric bass guitar and he continues to inspire bass players and musicians from around the world. This is the life and story of James Jameson. James Lee Jameson was born on January 29, 1936 in Charleston, South Carolina. He was one of 12 children. As a child, Jameson learned to play gospel, blues and jazz music on the radio. Even though Jameson was quite reserved and quiet as a teenager, he was so passionate about music that he actually got to the level where he was good enough to perform in public. This passion for music was probably due to the fact that he was partly raised by his grandmother who played piano and his aunt who sang in the church choir. In 1954, Jameson moved with his mother to Detroit and attended Northwestern High School. Now, we know Jameson for his iconic electric bass playing, but in high school, he actually studied the double bass. While at high school, Jameson began playing at the local blues and jazz clubs in the Detroit area and he was heavily influenced by jazz double bass players such as Ray Brown, Paul Chambers and Percy Heath. After graduating from high school, he joined blues singer Washboard Willie's band and because of his solid reputation from performing in the Detroit clubs, he later toured with Jackie Wilson. After becoming one of the most sought after session musicians in Detroit's thriving music scene, he managed to find steady work at Barry Gordy's Hotsville USA studio, home of the Motown record label. This is when Jameson's career really started to take off. In the early 1960s, Jameson began working with Motown Records. There he became a member of a core group of studio musicians called the Funk Brothers. Like Jameson, most of the Funk Brothers were jazz musicians. In the daytime, they would record in this small basement studio which they called the Snake Pit due to all the cable runs out the ceiling. And then in the evening, they would perform at the jazz clubs. They did occasionally tour the US with Motown artists, but for most of their career, this was their schedule. Session work in the day, jazz clubs at night. During the 1960s, this close-knit group of musicians performed on countless hit records from Motown artists including The Supremes, Marvin Gaye, The Temptations and so much more. But the sad thing is the Funk Brothers, including James Jameson, were never credited on any of the songs or albums. Their pay was considerably less than the main artists, so occasionally they would have to find freelance work elsewhere to pay the bills. But as Jameson was quickly becoming one of the most in-demand bass players in the industry, his reputation eventually earned him a retainer for $1,000 a week, which is roughly $8,000 in today's money. Now he could afford a very comfortable lifestyle for himself and his family. But how did James Jameson grow to become one of the most iconic bass players of all time, developing an immediately recognizable sound that everyone came to know and love, even influencing music legends such as Marcus Miller, John Patitucci, Anthony Jackson, Geddy Lee, Sting and Paul McCartney? Well in this next part of the story, let's dive deeper into James Jameson's style and sound. When Jameson first started working in the studio, his earliest sessions were performed on the double bass, but in the early 1960s, he switched to playing the electric bass guitar. When Jameson made this transition to the electric bass, 
It was a relatively new instrument and it was not well established. So Jameson developed his own way of playing the instrument and he became known for playing the iconic Fender Precision Bass. If you listen to James Jameson's bass playing, you'll be able to hear influences of his early days of playing double bass in the jazz clubs and then applying that to his session work in the studio playing electric bass. There are five things that define Jameson's sound and his background as a jazz musician and upright bassist and how it influenced his electric bass playing style. Number one, he frequently used open strings like here in What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Instead of Jameson playing the note A on the 5th fret of the E string, here, he's playing with an open A string, which is a common thing to do as a double bass player for intonation reasons. Number two, one aspect of Jameson's upright playing that carried over to his electric bass guitar playing was the fact that he generally used only his right index finger to pluck the strings. So if I just show you what that looks like on the electric bass, as you can see here, I've got my right index finger in the plucking hand, and he would just use this one finger to play all the lines. You're gonna have to do raking as well if you're gonna wanna incorporate this technique into your bass playing. But he's really just using that one index finger. This style of playing with just the one index finger is more of a double bass technique. Jameson became famous for playing with just one finger and his index finger even earned its own nickname, the hook. Check out the hook in action in this video of Jameson playing live with Marvin Gaye. Number three, Jameson used Labella heavy gauge flat wound strings, which he never replaced unless he broke a string. He did not particularly take care of his instruments as he once said, the dirt keeps the funk. And the neck on his P bass started to bend and while this made it more difficult to fret, Jameson believed it improved the quality of the tone. Now Jameson liked a really warm sound with the volume control on his P bass turned all the way up full and then the treble or the tone was actually halfway. On most of his studio recordings, his bass was just plugged directly in with no pedals or effects. Check out this isolated clip of Jameson's bass playing and listen to his warm round P bass sound. Number four, Jameson's bass lines relied heavily on chromatic runs, syncopation, ghost notes, and inversions, which contrasted with popular music of the time. In the 1950s and 60s, R&B, rock and roll, and country bass lines were a lot simpler and less rhythmically and harmonically complex. Check out Jameson's more complex melodic runs, syncopated rhythms, and deep sense of groove in this 1967 recording of Bernadette by The Four Tops. Number five, as Motown's founder, Barry Gordy said, Jameson was an incredible improviser. Jameson probably developed his improvisational skills back in the Detroit jazz clubs. This knowledge of improvisation gave him the ability to be very creative and versatile in the studio and he was able to look at basic chord charts and create a masterpiece. Over time, his technique and improvisational approach became a lot more nuanced and more developed. During Jameson's time at Motown Records, he played on over 23 number one hit songs, which is a record only Paul McCartney of the Beatles has ever surpassed. Paul even said that James Jameson had a huge impact on his own bass playing. Here's just some of the many hits Jameson played on. My Girl by The Temptations. You Can't Hurry Love by The Supremes. What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Shotgun by Junior Walker and The All Stars. For Once In My Life and I Was Made To Love Her by Stevie Wonder. 
Going to a Go-Go by The Miracles, I Heard It Through the Grapevine by Gladys Knight and later by Marvin Gaye, Reach Out, I'll Be There and Bernadette by The Four Tops, and he occasionally recorded for other labels such as Boom Boom by John Lee Hooker in 1962 and Higher and Higher by Jackie Wilson in 1967. Hey, let me know in the comments what is your favorite James Jameson bassline and why? And if you're enjoying this story so far and you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's completely free to do so and you can always unsubscribe in the future. Now, by the mid 1960s, Jameson's style became an indispensable part of the Motown sound. His distinctive bass lines were immediately recognizable and his ability to create complex melodic bass parts earned him a reputation as a true musical genius. It really seemed like nothing could stop him, but in 1972, everything was about to change forever. In the late 1960s, Jameson's career began to decline as Motown Records were moving away from its classic sound and in 1972, they actually moved their headquarters to Los Angeles. Jameson also moved there himself and occasionally found studio work, but he was not working with a steady group of musicians. His relationship with Motown Records officially ended in 1973. In Los Angeles, bass players started using more high-tech amplifiers, round wound strings, and were incorporating new techniques like slapping, and Jameson's style just became a thing of the past. In the mid-1970s, a producer even attempted to modernize Jameson's sound by asking him to switch to brighter sounding round wound bass strings. But Jameson was reluctant to try new things and politely declined. By the 1980s, he was unable to get any serious work as a session musician and he was largely forgotten about in the music industry. After years of struggling with alcoholism and financial difficulties, Jameson died in Los Angeles on August 2nd, 1983. Jameson's work was uncredited until later in his career. Many people did not know who he was and even bass players that unknowingly emulated his style had no idea who it was. In 2000, Jameson was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and his bass guitar was displayed in the museum's Legends of Bass exhibit. He received a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2004 and Bass Player Magazine's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2011. James Jameson's impact on the music industry and the electric bass guitar helped to define the Motown sound and influence generations of musicians despite facing personal and financial struggles later in life. If you want to learn how to play James Jameson bass lines by ear, then check out this video next. In this video, I break down a simple three-step system you can use to transcribe rhythms by ear so you can start learning bass lines a lot faster. Click the video now and I'll see you there.